All right, everyone, I got a really sort of surprisingly cool video, at least cool idea for you in this sharing with you the core five uh, and, and core subcompact. I haven't sat down and took, taken time to listen to music and I can't tell you how long. I've got a lot of nice stuff. I've got these crazy speakers in the garage and I've got crazy speakers in the house. I've got crazy speakers everywhere. And uh, I, you'll see in this video, I'm kind of torn on what to do. Uh, and I, I even, even when I had set them up and decided I was going to do them, I almost pulled them off the desk after, after uh, Mike left with the camera. And uh, I think this is the coolest desk audio setup you could possibly do. Now, it's a lot of money and not for everybody, but I know some of you guys are running, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollar PCs or, you know, Mac Studios, uh, or you have, you know, fancy monitors uh, for your, you know, for your display monitor. And so then to take a great pair of speakers and make that experience really fun, uh, I think this is it. And so I'm gonna show you, we're gonna unbox this put this together, install it, and I'll show you, you know, the final setup at the end. I had last night, I was sitting there just listening to music for like an hour and a half. Just sitting there. I was done with all that I was doing. And I don't ever do that. So this is gonna seem a little bit crazy, a little bit weird, but I, this is my desk setup, I think, forever. So let's get into it. So we're gonna unbox, we're gonna open it up here in the garage, we're gonna take it into my office. I'm gonna take out my LYDs, my LYD fives, and we're gonna put the new core fives in place. I'm gonna take out the sub nine uh, that I have in there, the sub nine S, take that out and put the uh, way overkill uh, course uh, sub compact and replace the, uh, the, the sub nine S in my office and see how that goes. So if you're watching this in sometime between July 15th and August 31st of 2024, this video will live forever. So the giveaway is over if it's after August 31st, but you can go click to enter the giveaway uh, we're giving away a garage, like uh, Emmanuel's garage that we gave away a number of years ago. Uh, and so uh, the last winner, we're in the process of designing Charlie's garage. So make sure to check out those videos. Uh, but this package, because it's brand new, I was able to convince Dyn Audio and uh, NAD to let me build a package for you and put it as an entry to allow us to um, uh, call, call a lot of entries because it's a really expensive package. But if you were on the giveaway page and click shop now to all the giveaway items and you click the Dynaudio Core Solution. So before you get too excited, no, it's this package with one blue sound node, not two. But if you wanted to do a garage system, and this would be a great garage system, it doesn't take as mu up as much space as the regular Core and Core 59 setup that I normally do. Uh, and it's about half the money. Uh, and so if you want to entry into high-end audio in your garage with a near-field studio monitor that does really well in a garage application, um, this could be a setup for you. I'm going to do this one better and set this up in my office for my computer speaker. So it could work for either, either or. I'm gonna set it up in my office, uh, but again, the package here is uh, our garage package. So it comes with one of these guys, which is your wireless music streamer. Uh, so a Dyn Audio, I'm sorry, a Blue Sound Node. These are the Pulse M's we have here. But the Blue Sound Node is a high-res streaming device the speakers have their own built-in amplifier, so this is, think of this as a preamp. So this is basically a preamplifier with all kinds of inputs and outputs. You're going to plug this into the wall. We've got adapter cables here, so you're going to convert the RCA out to XLR. You're going to go XLR into the speakers and the subwoofer, uh, and you're going to have yourself a nice listening experience uh, in the garage, in your office, anywhere in the house. Um, I, I, I'm excited to try this as my computer setup. This blue sound node will not work with your computer, so you could probably somehow adapt it, uh, but I'm gonna use a, a shit audio uh, interface instead, and I'll show you what, how we're gonna connect that. So blue sound power, or blue sound node, not a power node, uh, is what you would normally use in the garage here. And we have the package set up with all the cables you need. It's idiot proof. I mean, you literally can't mess it up. Three of these, three of these. 
One for the sub, one for the left, one for the right. Each speaker plugs into the wall. Plug your power node into the wall, update the software, get it connected to your network, and you're good to go. Doesn't get any easier than that. I have many videos, we'll put a link in the description, maybe put it in the card here, Mike, of uh, the Blue Sound node setup so that people can, can see how that works. So I haven't seen these yet. They unbox them to take photos. I haven't seen it yet, so let me open these up and uh, really acclimate myself with this. So again, if you're not a hi-fi guy, you don't get too excited. These are 17 hundo a piece. I know, I get it. Stop yelling at the screen, I can't hear you. But I can, I understand, there's some of you are yelling. So these are not for the faint of heart. And the subwoofer is another 2,700 bucks. So what are we talking about here? So uh, 2,400, 2,700, so your $5,100 um, computer speaker setup. That's a little dicey compared to uh, the LYDs I have there. So LYD fives, what are those? Uh, LYD5, they're a thousand bucks. So a thousand bucks and then a sub 9S is what I have now. 2150 versus 5100. So I'm um, $3,000 more. That's pretty spicy. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what to say, but hey, this kind of stuff makes me happy. So it's not about the money. I don't care about the money. I just want, oh, these are gonna be too big, I think. Yeah, for my computer speaker. So we might be setting these up in the garage. Let's see. I tell you what, why don't I just carry one in there and see. I think that's gonna be too big for me. It is pretty, pretty slick looking. So Pascal Class D amplification, you know, high-end DAX. Uh, the way that this works is this is a near field studio monitor, meaning that the tweeter is flat on the face here, the woofer's flat on the face here. It's designed to be used in a critical listening environment like we're mastering audio in a recording studio, uh, where uh, the, the, the reason that a near field type speaker works better in a garage is, you know, since it's designed for me to listen to like right here, um, it doesn't tend to send sound all over the darn place. And it's just, it's a magical combination of a crappy listening environment of a garage with a bunch of echo and stuff. And you can end up with a really decent listening experience. Now, these guys are pretty cool because all the amplification is done on board. And so this brick amplifier that takes up the whole back piece. And then you have some DSP options. So you have full and high pass for the bass extension. Uh, we'll run them at full range, but we could high pass them if we wanted to make sure we directed all, all the bass of the subwoofer, most of the bass at 80 hertz up. Uh, you have an on and standby mode, so we'll generally leave it on standby so it can signal sense. You're gonna choose, is it the left or right channel? I always like to run them in dark, but there's dark, neutral, and bright, so it adds or subtracts, I think, 3 dB of gain to the you know high frequencies. I like to knock it down a bit. Uh, you can run it as free wall or corner, depending on where you're at. If it's up against the wall or say in the corner, I would you know, use the DSP setting. So we'll probably set it in the free setting. Uh, and then you also have free uh, uh, desk or soffit. So you can adjust position one, position two to help kind of dial it in. So we'll run them both at free. Uh, and then we have our output, our input level output, and then our you know SPL level output. So we'll kind of tweak that depending on what it sounds like. So this is basically our volume control of the speaker. Think of it that way. So it controls input sensitivity and then output sensitivity. And then we're gonna run the analog input. Digital in is if you have a digital mixer, uh, and so we won't need to use that input. So we're gonna use the analog input here. And uh, we don't obviously don't need to use the service connections. I'm not sure what the world clock does. That's something in the pro audio world that I don't know anything about. But I would highly suggest you consider uh, getting a pair of uh, isoacoustics Aperta stands, we have these in stock in the store as well. Uh, so you can get the ISO acoustic stuff. For these, I think I would do, so if you just type in in the search bar on obsessgarage.com, ISO acoustics, and you go to Aperta. There's the standard, the 200 and the 300. 
Um, the 300 certainly is too big. Let me see here. Let's lift my fancy speaker off of here and see if this fits, just so we can check that off the list. This is a passive speaker, so I have an amplifier up in one of the cabinets. But this is my beloved um, you know, Dyn Audio speaker for the garage. Look at this sucker. The Heritage Specials. Amazing. So I think this might be too big. It's close. So you can fit it on the standard. This is the 200 series. So it's going to be a little bit big. Depending on what your application is, I think I'd feel more comfortable with it on a 200 stand. But yeah, it does poke out a little bit on the side. So that'll help isolate the speaker. So let's carry this into, I have a set of 100s in my office. So let's carry it in there and let's make an edge, a decision here of what it looks like on my desk because I really want it. I want it badly. But this is still pretty big for that setup. So let's go try it. Let's go try it out. Look at this. So this is my office. This is a restoration hardware desk. I've got a couple of uh, LG 5K monitors and I'll stow my, my MacBook Pro here. I've got a, what is this brand? Thunderbolt dongle here, OWC Thunderbolt dongle because I want to connect. So I'm connecting Thunderbolt to the dual monitors and then Thunderbolt to my Jodenheim. LYD 5s. Now, one of the disadvantages that we found is, and now it's not an issue here because my air conditioner is kind of loud and the street's right there. Uh, but if you're in like a really um, noise controlled, like really quiet room, there is a little, there's like a little hiss. You probably can't pick it up on the microphone, but the studio monitors have a little baby hiss. I want to see if these do it. Uh, and so what I've been doing or what I've been suggesting instead of going active, because the amplifier is always on, even in standby, it's always drawing a little bit of power. Uh, and so uh, instead of going active, we've gone passive. Uh, and so I did the Dynaudio uh, either, the one that I've been doing is the smaller version of those, the, uh, why is my brain not working? Core, LYD. Evoke. Evoke, yeah. I have contours in there, evokes. So I have, in my office at, at uh, HQ, I have the Evoke 10s, which are a little bigger than this. They're a little, they're kind of in between this size wise. So I have Evoke 10s and I have an NAD amplifier, like a, like an amplifier. It's a, it's an amplifier that has a USB input. So that is whisper quiet. So if you're considering doing a studio monitor setup as your desk and you don't have a, if you have a whisper quiet room and that thing kind of annoys you, I can't hear it unless I am up in. And I still can't because like my air conditioning is running, I can't hear it. Um, I'm pretty sensitive to that kind of stuff. Uh, and so, you know, I, I have bo both different setups and we're going to create desk setups. If you ever need help with a desk setup and you have a lot of money to spend because that's what you're going to need in order to do this stuff, um, just shoot me an email. I'm happy to help you. So Dyn Audio, Dyn Audio, these are LYD5. So these have amplifiers. It's not Pascal Class D. It's a lower, lower quality amplifier. This has... I believe 125 watts and 250 watts allocated, where this is, I believe, 50 watts and 75 watts. So just a different power quality level, different amplitude or output level, different, you know, it's quality tweeter. The tweeter's a little different, very similar tweeter to, that, to what's in the Don Audio Contour line. Uh, and so better tweeter, better woofer, better enclosure, not quite as pretty though. And this is the smallest version of what they make. I think this is gonna to be too big for here. So LYD, LYD, I have the sub 9S here, which is a little nine inch subwoofer. I don't like this sub for any application outside of a desk setup. It's for a home theater, it just doesn't have enough output. It's a single nine inch woofer. Uh, it's not a super high excursion or super, super stout woofer. I love the sub 18S, which is the dual nine inch. It has the high excursion, you know, big heavy magnet. Uh, this is a much smaller woofer. This is great for music or great for, you know, doing Zoom meetings and stuff like that. Uh, it helps sort of fill the frequency range, but you can get by without a subwoofer if you wanted to with any of these speakers. And then the Jodenheim, this, so this is from, 
S-C-H-I-I-T, I think. Shite audio, shit audio. Um, and this is called the Jotunheim, J-O-T-U-N-H-E-I-M. This is the key component. I don't sell this. It, they're only sell direct to consumer. Uh, and so this here is what gets me via Thunderbolt. So Thunderbolt out into the Odenheim, and that's why I need the OWC because I have one, two, three Thunderbolt connections, uh, and then I need the fourth Thunderbolt connection for power. For my, for, so you need four connections, and my MacBook Pro, my M2 MacBook Pro, only has three. So that's why I need the Thunderbolt dock in order to make that make that work. Uh, and then oftentimes I'll take I have an OWC uh, card reader. This is a CF Express card for I have this sitting here because I use that often for for vlogging for inside the hex. So the way this setup works, Thunderbolt out of the out of the computer into the OWC. That's what this one is. Thunderbolt out of the OWC into the Jotunheim. Then I have uh, this one is XLR. So XLR XLR out into the speaker. Now the way that I'm running this setup, and I want to get the core sub opened before I do this. So this is XLR left and right into the subwoofer and then then high passing out of the subwoofer into my LYDs. So it's a little different setup here. So what I may do is run the core sub because I don't think the core sub has pass through or you know crossover input output. But let's just see what this looks like here. It's the same power cord, so I could reuse all this stuff. It's the same uh, XLR connection. So pull this out, pull this out. Set this aside here for a second. Yeah, so the Aperta standard works as well on this speaker. Let's see what it looks like. Hmm. <laughs> mm. What do you guys think? What's your vote? Um, I'm going to decide one way or the other, but I think it looks cool. I got enough acoustic treatments in here for it. You just try it, you know? Try well, it let's, go, let's go with it. So the question is, how am I going to be able to connect this with the Jotunheim if I wanted this for my desk? Because the Jotunheim doesn't have a subwoofer output. Let's see what we got in here. This is way overkill for the, uh, oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm gonna be doing this subwoofer in my desk setup. So maybe we're gonna set it up in the garage here for fun. Just for funsies. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's no joke. Get off of here. Pull that off of there. Uh... <clears throat> that's a pretty stout piece of equipment. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, I would just Y adapt out. I bet you I have Y adapters in the attic. In fact, I'm pretty sure I do. Let's do that. But, so see the sub, see the woofer difference? It's that high excursion. Super nasty. This thing is gonna be freaking sick. I just love how these subwoofers sound. Well, should we carry it in there? Let's hook up the, uh, let's hook, hook up the compact or let's hook up the, the Core 5s with my Sub 9S and see how that sounds. And then maybe we'll bring it here in the garage. I already know how it sounds because I've already heard that, I mean, there's just a smaller version of the Core 7s, right? But like that subwoofer in your garage with the, you know, it's basically rhino lined the exterior, the coating on it or the, you know, the, the stuff they put on, on the surface is just great for the garage. That silk dump tweeter just makes me happy. Boom. I'm gonna go hook this up. I got a quick Zoom meeting with the uh, deionized, uh, the guys who make our DI resin. And so I'm gonna be some zooming in some high quality here. What do you think, Kate? You like these speakers?
Nope. Let's just take a little gander here. Okay, let's set this aside. Let's see if I can squeeze this little cutie in this spot. It's gonna be a little tight. Let's see. Pieces, yeah, I got plenty of room, look at that. There's no reason why I can't do this. Look at how good that looks. Even fits on the little standard aperta. It's like, uh, how to get. Okay, so we take this guy. Okay, we go there. We go analog in. A three prong XLR connection. Make sure we set it up here. So stand by, full, dark. This is the left speaker. Um, we'll go free, free. And then we'll start like two clicks up and see. We'll play with the volume here in a minute. Same thing over here. Make sure your left and right speaker match. Copyright free bangers right there. <laughs> Copyright free music, here we go. Maybe we should have just searched this from the beginning. So let's check our sound here. Yeah. So if I turn the volume down, yep, same thing. Studio monitors have a resting, resting hiss. It's pretty good. this setup. I mean, I've never listened to it this loud when I'm, because I would use, I do, I mean, this is kind of dumb. I have an NAD M33 right there. So if I was going to listen to music, I would generally listen to that in a pair of Evoke 20s, but so the resolution on Spotify, so if you go, this is gonna be roughly CD quality. setup here how can I I mean if it, lo it still works like this like if I didn't see the smaller speakers I mean it doesn't look ridiculous I want the big subwoofer though actually I think the big sub will fit I just turn it sideways I don't know what to say it's just awesome just get it, <laughs> just get it. <laughs> imagine you bought these and then you won the garage yeah. you got you won in all things of all aspects of life yeah. All right. Let me, um, what do I want to do here? So what I'm going to do, because the Jodenheim only has left, right, out, is actually what I could do. I don't need to Y adapt out. You mean just rewire it and then come back tomorrow and capture the, because it's going to take me a couple of hours <laughs> to wire this thing up. All right, so let me show you what I ended up doing. Uh, I didn't have to rewire any of this. Use the same, it's the same power plug as the, as the LYDs and then my XLR connection. So I have a longer four meter XLR connection that runs around and through. This here, I, can't, I think they stopped making them, but this was from a company called Bison Office that made this, this aluminum, or it's probably not aluminum, just powder coated steel. 
but heavy duty wire chase. So I have all my wires tucked in there and then I have another one on the side of the cabinet here as well. Where I zip tied, tied everything up, made it nice and clean. I have the single power connection, you know, the single uh, power strip connection here because I have a power strip, like a monster power strip attached to the top of the, you know, of the desk just to keep everything nice and clean and organized. And so what I ended up doing, because the Jotunheim doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have a sub out, uh, what I'm doing is I went, I had, I had a Y adapter, so I had a male to female Y adapter, uh, so I could do uh, both left, the left channel, or I'm sorry, the right channel, which is this one, and the subwoofer off that same connection. All you need to do is just get full range frequency and full range audio to the subwoofer. And I went analog into the subwoofer. So power, single XLR, power, single XLR, power, single XLR. It's all plugged in. I have Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt USB-C running from the OWC to my dongle or my, my, my Jotunheim. The, this is the audio interface and this is a, a high res audio interface as well. And then the beauty of this audio, audio, audio interface versus say some of the ones that are designed for recording uh, the universal audio or the, there's another one I think it's Apogee. Uh, but the problem with them is they, they run like really onerous software that slows your computer down and is always clunky. And so this thing is always on, always simple, always works. Uh, and so as soon as I connect my computer to it, 99% of the time it shows up and automatically connects. Uh, and so that's, that's the nice, nice feature about the way that this is set up. And so I was in here just ripping. Now, I, uh, I was vibrating the desk a little bit, so I had to kind of tweak some of the handles and stuff. Uh, but this, to me, I think it looks cool. It certainly functions well. I'll go grab my laptop here in a second, show you uh, kind of the setup. I wouldn't recommend, this is the yellow tech uh, system for mounting, uh, mounting your, your monitors. I almost prefer to just put the monitor on the desk, you know, because I can never get the monitors lined up. Because if I move it one millimeter, then the other one, it kind of sags and, you know, trying to lock it down, it's just annoying. So uh, the Ergotrons that I've had in the past were a little easier to get the monitors angled and lined up properly. Uh, but this, uh, this setup is, is the darn dream. I think I have this one set up in on... No, it's on standby. It just got some sort of signal. So the speaker setup, I actually ended up changing. So if you do end up buying this, um, you want to make sure. So you're going to set the input level at plus four. You're going to set your SPL at uh, 85 dB. You're going to set them both to free. And then you know, just choose your left and right speaker. Set it to dark. And then the subwoofer, I have these, that subwoofer has these same settings. So your input sensitivity and your SPL is gonna be turned to max. And that was the, that was the best, uh, best sort of combination I could get. So I'm running these full range and I'm running the subwoofer as low pass uh, and I'm getting you know, an amazing result. So that is one disadvantage. When you're with a computer, you know, you don't have EQ options. You don't have the option to really do any kind of adjusting. Uh, and so you just kind of play with the, with the, you know, the, the EQ or the DSP on the back of the, the, the amplifier just to get it set up the way you want. And it is amazing. Let me grab my laptop. I'll play a couple of copyright free things for you. It's awesome. You know, I thought about buying a Mac Studio, but you know, I use this laptop for everything. So this is an M2 Mac. I haven't bought the M3. I'm, I'm waiting for the M4. Um, M2 Mac, four terabytes, fully loaded. I think this is like a $5,500 laptop. So it's their it's their most expensive, fully loaded version. I'm using it to edit and you know shop for stuff <laughs> so but I do you know I will edit photos and edit videos you know pretty often uh, and so having a little bit you know beefier and then when I travel a lot I don't want to have to take an external drive and so I pay the extra money with you so that's like adds like a thousand dollars to the laptop to get that four terabyte hard drive so it, it adds quite a bit of money so I was listening to the title last night 
actually let's go back to uh so so i was doing a little bit more thinking you know 320 kilobits is actually sub cd quality it's below 16 bit 44 kilohertz so not ideal i wish i could play you some of the stuff i was listening to but man it's amazing so i was really convicted and when i set this up i'm like you know this is kind of dumb maybe i should just get rid of my m33 i'll go i was going to go out in the garage and get the little um uh the, the the node and then just set the speakers up over here on that system but i'm like i use that system like once a month i use this five times a day um and you know this and many of you are like me like this is my livelihood this laptop is my entire business you know and that's one thing uh, and so having an amazing video audio experience this makes me want to get better monitors these are pretty great pretty good monitors these are the lg 5ks that were developed you know with apple for the macbook um or the you know mac mini or the studio um i was gonna just pull it out and then i said you know let me just I cut all the zip ties and rewired it and put the subwoofer in and i just knew as soon as i did it it's just awesome i don't know what we're gonna do i i don't know if you saw on the youtube but yeah if we're not monetizing it through the yeah through the membership i don't yeah. know that's that's a question yeah because i think it can still be on membership but it just it's not gonna generate money you know yeah to me of Dynaudio is that I'm sitting here, they're right in my face. They're like in my ears. Center image is right here. Oftentimes when I'm in here, both with the LEDs and with this system, I'm like, is the speaker on or is it coming out of my screen? Like, and then I have to put my ear up because, or are both speakers on because you get a nice tight center image even with this kind of wonky, you know, setup I have here with the speakers not perfectly towed. Um, but the magic of it, even at high volumes, is just don't get fatigued. That's why I love, that's why I have Dyn Audio all over my whole life, you know, in my car, in my house. I just love the sound signature that they have. And then these awesome amplifiers and awesome drivers, just amazing. So glad I did this. So glad. What did I say it was? 50, uh, 50, 5200 dollars, and then these are this is 500 bucks, and you got another maybe 60 bucks for the cables. So you're about six thousand dollars for this computer setup. I get that's a lot of money, but 1200, 1200, 5500. You know, I mean, or if you have, if this is your livelihood, this is your life, which many of us are now. This is my, this is my entire business. I think it's money well spent. And most of the time I'm going to listen to it, you know, this volume, watching YouTube videos or editing or, but then having the capability to. The only word I can think of is Laurel's word, transcendent. <laughs> it's, it's good. <laughs> so hit me up if I can help you build this out. What my long-term vision is with desks is to, I would love to have a, you know, several different tiers of systems and have a, an umbilical cord where I can just send you the cabling and then you can just kind of, you know, attach the cabling to, to and we'll pick like three different desks. 
this is a restoration hardware desk that I bought for this room, so this not ideal for for you know what I normally prefer on a desk, but the long-term vision will be to have the stands, the speakers, the monitors. Uh, we probably wouldn't sell the monitors or the computer, but then selling the umbilical cord for either PC or Mac, and then have it so that you have all the cables tied and loomed and all that stuff, and you just plug everything in where all the whips come out at the right distance. So that's my that's my long-term plan. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hit me up, Matt, at ObsessedGarage.com if I can help you with your desk system or your other system. Uh, we're building another company called Obsessed Home Theater with my partners. I think I mentioned that earlier. Uh, and so we're going to have a ton of different speaker lines. Um, I'm, uh, I'm auditioning a bunch of other speakers, ELAC, Perlison, uh, some Martin Logan stuff for the home theater side of things. But for me, music, Dyn Audio. 100%. I'm a Dyn Audio dealer. I'm an NAD dealer. Um, I'm not a dealer for uh, for the Odenheim, um, but I can help you figure all this stuff out. I'd love to do it because I love talking about this stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. Go to ObsessedCars.com. We'll put links in the descriptions so of where you can get the Core Fives. There's the Core Five, the Core Seven, the Core Forty Seven, and the Core Fifty Nine. Core Fifty Nine might be a little big for this, <laughs> but uh, the new Core Five and the new Core Compact is awesome. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Uh -huh.